Hi guys, thanks for stopping by. My name is Scribbletoon, so I'm doing a little update video for you and a question and answer session. First I'd like to say thank you to all my new followers on Twitter. We're approaching about a thousand followers, which is absolutely remarkable for me. I never expected to have so many people follow me in sh such a short period of time. I'd like to especially thank the Yogscast for that. They've retweeted me quite a lot and exposed me to a massive new audience. Thank you ever so much. I never expected to get that kind of response. Thank you guys for sticking by and taking an interest in my stuff. Uh, the reason for this update video is because I'm aware that I haven't been posting anywhere near the quantity of artwork which I had been doing a few months ago and I'd just like to explain a little bit of the reason why that is. And the main reason is, as many of you might have noticed, I actually work two jobs which is a day job and scribble tunes in the evening after I finish that said day job. I am quite a high position in my day job. I'm site manager for a organization which uh, revolves around business and tourist information and I organize the day-to-day -day activities which requires a lot of my attention, a lot of my time. I do enjoy my day job so it's not something I'm looking at leaving to do scribble tunes and scribble tunes is far far too small to actually consider making that a full-time permanent job at the moment anyway. But what this does mean is that I have to limit the amount of time I can spend doing my illustration and animation stuff to the evening. Now the other reason why there isn't so much stuff is I've actually undertaken a huge animation project. I am doing a minute long intro animation for, very sh for a short film by JH Film, who's a good friend of mine, and that has taken up a lot of the time that I would spend doing the doodling and the freelance work that I was doing. Uh, might I like to also add that uh, the a lot of the f fan work that I was doing is not paid. It's just stuff that I do off my own back and I do for you guys because I know you like to see those pictures and I actually like doing them. They give me a lot of joy drawing the, those pictures and uh, I have every intention to keep doing those once as soon as I have the allotted free time. So I was asked several questions by um, my Twitter followers which I'd like to start to answer now start with the first one I got sent which was from Enya, thank you very much. They ask, how was Scribbletoons born? So I, when I finished college, um, or uni uh, when I finished university, about four years ago, four or five years ago now, I launched a website called cartoonscribbles.com and that's because I draw in a very uh, scribbly scribbly style. That didn't really come to very much because, uh, mainly because the economy was bad and all of that, the recession was hitting and I had to take on a full-time job elsewhere which took up all of my time. I worked incredibly unsociable hours and it basically left me with zero time and zero ability to, to draw anything. So scribble tunes, uh, cartoon scribble, sorry, just became a dusty kind of remnant of nothing. Also. Scribbletoons was a name short enough to fit on Twitter and I took on the Twitter hand handheld Scribbletoons and then I basically decided that why, why am I having multiple different names that sound the same and also somebody else launched a website called cartoonscribble.com which was one little less and did the same thing and I thought well there's too much similarity here between the between the lot of this so I need to really evaluate myself and so I took on the Twitter handheld name Scribbletoons and made that my own and and have been using it as an identity ever since and uh, go by that on pretty much everything so everything links back to me the one person and there's no confusion about who I am what I do and I also adopted the one logo and everything so I'm nice and easy to recognize. Tulip asked me what do I use for drawing and is it easy to use? So um, I've used multiple different programs over the years. I'm primarily a digital artist or digital illustrator. I can do the handheld stuff. To be honest, I'm not particularly very good at hand traditional painting and all of that kind of stuff. I don't have the patience for it, which is something if you if you feel you're impatient with drawing digital art is a godsend. The control Z button is amazing. You just undo every mistake that you ever make. I use a, I currently use a program called Paint Tools Sai. It's a Japanese illustrator program. You can get an English version of it costs only about £30, it's very cheap and it does fantastic line work. One of the things it falls down on is it doesn't have any text based form, although I have been told that the newest, uh, the new update for it will have. So I do use Adobe Photoshop to touch up and add any text based kind of work to the illustrative work. 
In terms of the animation, I use Flash. Flash is a quite a complicated program to use if you don't know what to do. There are multiple tutorials out, and it's also it does seem to be going a little way of a natural death. Other programs like Toon, Be Toon Boom Harmony, uh, all of that are sort of taking over its uh, over its place, and there is that kind of question as whether or not this is a program that you want to carry on using. However, it is a fantastic tool for 2D animation. Uh, you do have to have a lot of patience to do animation bear that in mind but if you if you're looking to do it then it's fairly simple there's lots of handy tools out there for that so, so I would always recommend paint or sigh and definitely recommend Photoshop if you can afford it because it's an expensive program but it is one of the uh, better programs out there and if you're looking to do animation then uh, Adobe Flash is a fantastic tool for that. Kieran asks when did I start using my unique style and what makes it special to me? So that's a that's an interesting question as well because I've I started drawing cartoons well I've been drawing cartoons all my life but I started drawing specific features of the way I draw people and my cartoons over a course of ye uh, many years but the main style that I have now probably I started about maybe a year year and a half ago uh, what happened was I picked up Scott Pilgrim comics. And I took a look and I just sort of fell in love with the way Brian Lee O'Malley was drawing and I thought well what's stopping me from having a go and I sort of did it and I found that actually it just sort of came a bit naturally to me and I, I liked the drawing style anyway so I just kept doing it and I sort of adapted it to how I had been drawing originally so I felt I took the inspiration from that drawing and applied it to my own drawing and became basically something that I do. Now one one thing to notice about styles is that they're always changing. If you have a look at my work from a year ago, compare it to work I'm doing now, the change isn't too dramatic but it's, it's enough that you can notice it and that I think is something about styles. Find a, uh, if you find a style that you like to draw in, don't be scared if it starts to adapt and become different and, and you look back at a month's work and it has changed. So Ben asked me, um, have I ever looked into Twitch live streaming a drawing, uh, maybe of him? Uh, ben, you are beautiful, I know, but um, I can't always draw you. With prepared questions sent in in a live chat, so I can and hosting the recorded video later. I have actually thought about doing live live streaming of my drawings. The trouble with live streaming is that I do not have a big enough audience for it yet. So I mean, I've got nearly a thousand followers on Twitter. The chances of having all 1,000 followers watching me on Twitch at the same time is very, very small. And um, it all depends on the time of day and, and all of that. Cause I've got many followers from elsewhere, so it's not convenient. Maybe in the future, when I've got a few, few more followers, I've got more of an active kind of audience, that will definitely be something I will certainly think about. I, I do enjoy interacting with people. Um, I love to talk to people, and I love doing the whole kind of live kind of thing. It's just currently at the moment there isn't the audience for it. But yeah, certainly something I'll think about in the future. Uh, Jonathan asked me, uh, any particular ways to study anatomy quickly and effectively? And the simple answer for that is life drawing. Um, it sounds really boring to be honest, but um, drawing actual people in front of you is the best way to do it. Now, you don't need to attend life drawing classes. You don't need to sit in a room filled with people all using charcoal and that kind of thing to draw a naked model in front of them. Uh, you can do life drawing in your own home with the people around you. Simply ask a friend, a family member to just to pose for you and draw them. And you won't get a better model than that. If you actually can get somebody to, draw, to uh, pose undressed for you, then even better because you get to see the full anatomy. But if you've got no one prepared to do that, uh, which is absolutely fine then don't worry about it drawing clothed people is fairly standard in fact uh, most people wear clothes most of the time anyway so it's good practice to draw the clothes the other thing i'd recommend is draw quickly drawing quickly uh, one is nice for the life uh, model because standing in a pose with your arms out or your legs out is incredibly tiring in an incredibly short period of time and they won't thank you for making them stand there for 10 minutes with their arm held out the quicker you draw as well, the more uh, erratic your strokes will be and it will allow you to actually give much more of a of a movement feel and allow you to understand how the body works. It sounds a bit silly because you think taking your time drawing and making sure you get it right is more important, but 
from a study point of view, being able to draw quite elaborate and expressive kind of movements is far more valuable because you really get a feel for how the body works. That is something that's something I find quite important. Also, people will draw. Uh, people tend to draw other people very stiff. If they're not used to drawing humans, they try and draw them almost sort of robotic, sort of angular kind of shapes. Humans are very squadgy creatures. Actually, we're we're made out of very squishy material, and we're not m hard at all. So, drawing if you if you're looking at your drawing and thinking what's wrong with it, the chances are it's probably too stiff. The person's far too rigid, and they look a little fake. Try drawing them with more roundy sort of shapes, loose kind of thing. Think of Venture Time and that kind of thing. What they do with the arms there. Go to that kind of extreme, and you might find that your human person starts to look a little bit more natural. Right, guys, thanks very much for listening. I think that's everything. I Hopefully that wasn't too rambly. Um, I don't often do much in the way of recording, so I don't get much practice for it. Have a lovely evening. Thank you very much.